Today we live in an environment of science, which leaves little debate, which is unfortunate because current science is in a dilemma, a stymie. It's stuck in a paradigm of inconceptual complexity. There is no science going on because science has been controlled by multinational corporations for decades. But back at the turn of the century, science was alive. And the Copernican model, pretty but impossible, emerged. Now, it can be hardly denied that the Copernican model is marred by a number of problems, which, objectively speaking, challenge the limits of our human senses and perceptions. In any case, there is nothing intuitive about the Copernican theory. It's safe to say that its widespread acceptance relies upon the faith conferred to the edicts of a few prominent luminaries who, about four centuries ago, decided for everyone, every one of us, that it was the definitive description of our solar system. And since then, innumerable questions have been raised as to the validity of its foundational tenets. That sounds like people are pretty pissed off at Copernicus. Yet such criticisms keep being dismissed and held as nothing short of heretical. But the scientific establishment continues to press on with the heliocentric model. Now the Copernican model of our solar system requires us to accept the following surreal notions, and they are surreal at best. The Earth orbits around the sun at 107,226 kilometers per hour. Does that even seem logical? That's 90 times the speed of sound. While our entire solar system itself is purported to move at 800,000 kilometers per hour. However, our current north star, Polaris, hardly appears to move at all during the course of a man's lifetime because, according to the scientists, it's unimaginably distant. Hello. Surely the time has come to question such, such extraordinary claims, which, when considered objectively, as you enjoy a nice cup of tea in front of your fireplace, should make you wonder if there is perhaps a more sensible way to interpret our tranquil solar system and its observed motions. Now, when something is unimaginable, there should be plenty of room for debate. No matter how long established any scientific theory might be. But that hasn't been the case for over a century in cosmology. How about we try something new? Something perhaps better that may explain every perturbation that's now currently unexplainable. Wouldn't that be a better model? Well, I think we have that model today, and you're, you've been looking at it for quite some time now. Now, have you ever heard of the Tychos? T-Y-C-H-O-S. The Sun and Mars are the main players of what these scientists have called the geoaxial binary system at or near its very center. And we'll get to that in a moment. And they find that the Earth and the Moon, while the Sun, escorted by two moons, Mercury and Venus, 
and Mars, escorted by its own two moons, Phobos and Deimos, performed the binary dance around our planet. Now, this may be incomprehensible to some, but in the last decade or so, what we have found is that all stars, the majority of stars, are either in a binary or a trinary dance with other stars and other planets and other systems. There's just not, there's no evidence of a heliocentric solar system like we have purported for hundreds of years. And that's the problem. In fact, it's a big problem. Now, the Tycho's is the revised model of our solar system. Its basic configuration is based on the model conceived by Tycho Brahe. Arguably, the greatest observational astronomer of all times. Now, after his untimely death in 1601 at age 55, Tycho Brahe, his favorite assistant, Christian Logmantinus perfected the master's lifetime work in his Astronima Danica, published in 1622. A monumental treatise regarded as Tycho Brahe's testament. The most striking feature of Tycho Brahe's solar system was that the orbits of the Sun and Mars intersect as they both dance around the Earth. Tycho Brahe, however, apparently believed for most of his life that Earth was completely immobile and didn't even rotate around its axis. This unlikely notion was corrected by Long Mountainous and his Astronica Danica in which Earth was given a 24-hour rotation. Now, the resulting model is known today as the semi-Tychonic model. And you're looking at it right now. Now, the Tychos model is nothing but a natural evolution of the Longomotnus refined semi-Tychonic model which allowed a diurnal rotation of Earth. The two are geometrically identical, yet the Tychos also proposes that Earth isn't stationary in the space, but that it also moves around a circle that has an orbit of its own, just like all of the celestial objects that we can see in the night sky. Now, the Tychos submits that the Sun and Mars are, in fact, a binary system. In the Tychos, the Earth orbits in the center of the Sun-Mars binary system, moving at the tranquil snail pace of just one mile per hour, or 1.6 kilometers per hour. And it completes one orbit in... 25,344 years, a period commonly known as the precession of the equinoxes. It is noted for pertinent comparison that the Sirius binary system is composed of two bodies, Sirius A and B whose observed highly unequal diameters are, proportionally speaking, virtually identical to those of the binary duo that we're looking at now. It rotates around its axis once daily and slowly revolves around its circular polaris of Vega Polaris, VPP, and the orbit once every 25,344 solar years. Now, Polaris and Vega 
are the two most notable northern stars under which the Earth transits in the course of what astronomers refer to as the Great Year, approximately 25,000 to 26,000 years, solar years. Now, in the Tychos, in the Tychos, the Sun and Mars are both escorted by a pair of moons. And that's a moon boom. Now, Mercury and Venus and Phobos and Deimos, respectively, are those moons, which are tidally locked to their respective hosts. And then you get the flower of the sun or whatever you want to call it. But our solar system is much more dynamic than the Copernican heliocentric nonsense that we've been fed. Now, another common trait of these five moons is their exceptionally slow rotational speed around their axis. Most remarkably, our own moon's synodic period is shown to be the greatest common divisor of all of our solar system's celestial bodies or orbital periods. For instance, our moon's value is a quartet, i.e. 50 to 4 over 12.5, and it reflects the orbital ratio between the moon and the sun, 1 to 12.5. This astounding pattern extends to our outer planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, which are respectively synced with our moon's orbital synodic period at 1 to 150, to 375, to 1050, to 2062.5, to 3100 ratio. Ho! Oh, Macaroni. macaroni. Now, here we are at the Tychosium 3D. Now, in the Tychos, a series of long-standing riddles of astronomy are shown to be effectively resolved by the core principles of the Tychos model, such as the failed Nicholson-Morley experiments, the James Bradley aberration of light, the anomalous yet spurious precession of Mercury's perihelion, and purportedly solved by Albert Einstein, the curious eight-shaped analemma and our need for the equation of time. Why only Mercury, can you believe this, and Venus have no moons? Why is that? And why do their orbits are both coplanar with the sun's six degree axial tilt? And why both Mars and sun exhibit a 79 year cycle? And why some cosmic motions absurdly appear to be both accelerating and decelerating at the same time? And also why all stars are observed to move around a tachoidal path. They all find sensible and forthright answers when assessed within the Tycho's paradigm and its one mile per hour motion of Earth. Is that even possible? Well, according to the mathematical models, it is. And it is demonstrated that the Copernican Keplerian model cannot possibly represent the physical reality of our cosmos, period. As it violates some of the most basic and indisputable realities of nature. Various examples are provided illustrating the numerous fallacies of the current widely accepted heliocentric configuration of the solar system, in particular with regards to matters of optics, perspective, statistical probability, and sheer common sense. In light of this, the Tycho's 
the model you're looking at now, emerges as, well, more than just an alternative impression or interpretation of the vast body of the observational data that has been gathered by this world's sharpest astronomers for 500 years. I would dare say the only existing model of our solar system fully consistent with empirical experience and astronomical observations and the most consolidated realities in our physical world would agree with the one you're looking at now. And that one is far from what we've been taught in schools. But it matches almost all of the observations in the recent decades, that most stars are binaries, and nothing is heliocentric that we've ever witnessed. We only interpret it that way because of Copernicus. Holy mackerel. Where is that guy? There he is. And that's a boom to knowledge. All the links will be below. You decide. We just provide the data. Which, by the way, is spectacular. Is everything spinning around a sun? Or have we all been duped? I prefer the latter. And that's a boom. Mm.